for the first time ever, bakers have been like, or at least the first time recently, bakers have been scared that like maybe they don't have a job. And so there's like, a, we have to like work to sort of make sure people realize the importance of, um, of good bread. There's this stigma with whole grain bread where it's like either because of the bitterness that can be in the grain or sometimes like because it's not as light. Try good, like at least 80% whole grain, you know, and or hopefully like 100% whole grain bread and try that when it's really done well is sort of like a challenge I would say to people who think they don't like whole wheat bread because I bet it's, they would like it more than they realized. And I think a lot of people think that they want bread to be just soft all the time, and they don't always realize that sometimes like having to chew into something is really rewarding, honestly, but also just that, yeah, there's, there's a lot of flavor there. It's not like everything has to be like soft and light and airy all the time. Like sometimes having a little crackly crust is a, is a good thing. It does have a steam button, and I just have to steam a lot. Like. <laughs> uh, my name's Max Blackman Gentile. I'm the head baker at Torst in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I think that I'm a perfectionist in some things that I do. Maybe not with everything, but with food, definitely. Especially with bread, like when it comes out of the oven and I'm looking at it. Um, it's just, it could always be better. Um, so I'm definitely happy with the shape for the most part. And I'm glad that I got the nice ears. And I like seeing it go from like really dark, like a almost black, like caramelly brown color up to all the way here where we've got like basically just white. The bread program at Torst is definitely still on the small side given that we're, uh, you know, we're a restaurant. We don't sell like retail bread or anything like that. Because we really intend it to be eaten with food, you can get, you know, bread with different dishes that they're all different. It's not like we're just throwing the same thing on every dish that needs bread. Uh, this is the dose of porridge roll. A um, little bit of the rice still around and it feels really sticky since there's so much uh, potato and rice and the flour itself. There's just all this starch in here. And so that's gonna help give it like this really nice, very creamy mouthfeel. So it really does smell like I'm, you know, going to a dosa hut. I have two kinds of sourdoughs. Um, those go with the, the house-made bread and butter on the menu. And so right now, um, it's an Oland country, and Oland is a heritage wheat from Sweden. It's really popular in Denmark. Basically with the Oland, um, there's some rye, some of the Oland flour as well, and then um, a nice, it's called Meadow White, it's also from Champlain Valley Milling. Um, and then with the dosa porridge, we've got a bunch of different flours actually. There's the strong bread flour, um, a nice amount of durum, this really beautiful durum. And then there's both some whole wheat and some high extraction wheat, especially the hearth breads. I really don't like to add any fat or sugar or anything like that to those. They're, they're truly just, I like using the best flours that I can find for that, the levan and then water and salt. I get always a little frustrated with things like olive bread, which I think is delicious, but, um, but olive bread is going to be delicious because olives are fatty and salty and fruity and they just taste great. So you can have kind of bad bread or like white bread that has no flavor, but if you add olives, people generally love it. And I get that, but I, want, I don't want to add things that are that strong, that are so like instantly good that they change how you react to the bread. I think what makes my bread unique is partly that I'm always trying to use flours that come from this region that I think are really flavorful, really fresh. I mean, a lot of the flour I use now is milled to order. I find in a lot of the like newer wave of bakers really like using fresh because 
there's just like so much more enzymatic activity when you add the water that you really get this like much more lively dough. Especially for sourdoughs, it does make a difference. The texture to me is much like creamier or more like custardy or cheesy even if you're using that nice fresh flour. I think there are a lot of good bakeries here, but I also think that there's a need for more good bread in New York. Because it's such a big city, we have room to fill the gaps in different neighborhoods and things like that. I think for a small restaurant like this, a lot of places that are making good bread are doing like one, often it's one or two kinds, but I'd be kind of bored if I wasn't making <laughs> more, than, more than one or two, you know? I do a Nori Parker House roll, um, which is like your super soft classic roll. In this case, I have nori, which is a type of seaweed. It's usually what like your sushi gets wrapped up in. Um, but I toast that and grind it into a powder, and it adds this sort of like very umami, but also funky fishiness almost. Um, so I'm doing that, and then I have the malted milk bread, which is basically like a Japanese style brioche maybe. These are the malted milk breads um, that I mixed earlier. Um, these went for a long, slow proof in the walk-in. I've just brushed them with a little bit of milk. The lactose in the milk uh, helps to give it a little bit of color too. And that's used for a dessert actually, so uh, we toast and brulee it with sugar and then put some uh, cashew ice cream and burnt parsnip puree on that. So a lot of different breads right now. Um, but it is definitely a small program. I mean, I say I'm head baker, but I am the baker, really, so. Okay. It's sort of a waste to use really nice flour or have this long fermentation time and then just eat it right out of the oven, I think, because you can eat some of it right out of the oven, but you should always wait a little bit to also be able to taste it once it's cool. It's like super tender and creamy. I think because bread is such an elemental part of what people eat, I'm hoping that like I'm giving someone some something that makes them really happy. When people ask about like, oh, should I be, what's the most important part? Like, should I be focusing on the proofing or the shaping or the scoring to, to make my loaf look like yours? And it's like, honestly, you have to pay attention to the entire process. I had one funny story was this guy came in a few weeks ago um, and he was asking whether we'd give it to him to go. And because we don't normally do like retail or we don't, we're not trying to sell food to go really. And I said, yeah, that should be fine. And when I went up to talk to the guy who was getting it, he said, thanks so much for selling me the bread. You know, I texted my wife saying I was at Taurus and I was gonna come home. And she said, I won't let you into the house without some of the bread and butter. So I think like that for me was both like, a great feeling to know that people were really liking it, but liking it so much that they'd want it in their home too, not just like when they're out to dinner. If we have more good bread and people start to realize that gluten isn't the enemy, that's just a good thing for all of us.